Hi, I'm Sam Roberts from Roberts Geospatial Engineering. Uh, today I'm going to be looking at map info and looking at some of the tree canopy analysis tools that are available in map info 2021 for processing LIDAR surveys. So in this video, we're going to use map info to uh, create some rasters of tree canopy analysis. And then in the next video, I'll use ProRaster to uh, take a look at the results. So let's have a look at map info. Right, so I have Map Info Pro 2021 running, and you can see it on the screen here. Um, I have a raster tab. So in order to do uh, LiDAR analysis, you're going to need Map Info Pro Advanced, which is the raster extension. And these days, if you have a Map Info Pro subscription, then you get that for free. So LiDAR tools and go to Tree Canopy Analysis, and it brings up this dialog. Um, under the Methods tab, you can do tree canopy coverage, tree canopy density, or tree canopy height. And that's the one that we're going to start off with. Um, so uh, these things work with uh, last files. So let's go and select some files to start off with. I'll just grab a few uh, last files here, or last files. Um, it will select the column for you. Okay, You don't need to select any of this, uh, and it will pick up the projection from the last file if it can, otherwise you might need to set it. So we have some files loaded and we're going to do canopy height. Um, so the way that canopy height works is that it needs to um, build a surface for the ground and then it needs to look at the vegetation that's above the ground and for each raster cell that it populates um, it finds the maximum difference between the height of the vegetation in that cell and the height of the ground in that cell. Uh, and if there are more than one returns in a cell, um, then it, it takes the maximum difference. Uh, and it also clips it at zero, so you won't get anything that's less than zero. So we need to tell the algorithm uh, what returns our ground and what returns our vegetation. So there's a, um, a rule here called the class rule. This should be set to ground and vegetation. And then you have two boxes here which allow you to set those uh, classification numbers. Now, there are a couple of other options. Um, I don't think anyone's ever going to use them. But if you don't have well-classified LiDAR data, um, and, for example, if you have data that only has ground returns, well, then you can specify what the ground returns are, and then it will assume that all other returns are vegetation. Um, and you can also do it the other way around, where you specify the vegetation returns, and it will assume that everything else is ground. Don't think they're likely to be used. Really, you need to have well-classified LiDAR data that, uh, that has ground and vegetation classified. So I'm going to go in here, and um, for my ground classes, I'm just going to hit 2. And for my vegetation class, I'm going to hit 3, 4, and 5 for low, medium, and high vegetation. So I'll just mention at this point that um, there's uh, nothing in here that says you have to compute vegetation. I mean, it's about tree canopy analysis, but you could go in here, for example, and select buildings instead of vegetation. And then you'd get a building height analysis. Um, or you could select um, uh, transmission wires and get a transmission wire height above ground analysis. So you can repurpose these tools to do other things apart from just process vegetation. Uh, so if you have last files that are version 1.4 or greater, you might have extended classifications, in which case you can tick this box and it will use those extended classification fields rather than the standard fields. I don't think that would happen very frequently. Um, if there are no vegetation returns within a grid cell, then it will be empty by default and it will have nothing in it. It will be uh, a null cell. Um, you can tick this option to make it zero if you wish. Now there's this uh, option here for patch size. This is simply a memory performance trade-off parameter. So it doesn't matter what you set it to, you're still going to get the same result. Um, but if you set, and you can set it to values between one and five. If you set it to one, it's going to use less memory, but it is going to be uh, a bit slower. Uh, if you set it to five, then it will use more memory, 
uh, but it will run faster, more efficiently, and I always leave it on five. Um, if you want to clip the output, you can do so to a polygon, in which case you then need to specify uh, the polygon file, which would be some tab file. Um, finally, you need to set the cell size, so I'll just set a cell size of two, and we'll just change the output file name, so this is height 01, and we'll hit process. Um, so it's going to go away uh, and, um, and generate that uh, ground surface. And at the same time as it's doing that, go looking for um, elevation returns within the grid cell and figure out that maximum difference. So that's really simple. And I think that's the, the real beauty of this methodology. It is so simple to do that and to get that uh, result straight away. And here we have... Uh, here we have our raster, and you can see individual trees uh, in the output raster. Um, in other systems, like for example, if you use ArcGIS, they'll provide you with a cookbook which tells you how to do it. And you have to go through a series of steps um, create your ground raster, create your elevation raster, do some um, uh, raster uh, calculator operation between these two. Um, whereas in Mapping Pro Pro, it all happens in one hit and you get a result. So that's canopy height. So let's take a look at the other two methods, um, canopy coverage and canopy density. So these are very, very similar, um, but they produce a slightly different result. Um, but the only difference between the algorithms is what returns they process. The actual algorithms themselves are identical. And so all the parameters for coverage are the same as parameters for density. Um, so canopy coverage gives you a percentage in each raster cell and tells you the percentage of that cell uh, that is covered by vegetation. And so it ranges from 0 to 100 for 0 to 100 um, percent. And it computes that by counting the number of vegetation returns in the cell and counting the number of um, ground returns in the cell and then computing a, ra a ratio, which is just vegetation times 100 divided by the sum of the vegetation and ground returns. Uh, and it's exactly the same for canopy density, it does exactly the same calculation. The only difference is that with canopy coverage, we filter the LiDAR data to acquire the first return. So we want the first thing that the laser has hit, and that's probably going to be a tree. Um, Whereas, and as soon as we've hit a tree, well, we consider that return to be blocked, uh, that laser, you know, to be blocked. Um, whereas with uh, canopy density, we accept all the returns. And what we're trying to figure out is, you know, what is the likelihood that that laser shot is able to penetrate through uh, vegetation and get to the ground? So, um, so if we have more ground returns, than, um, than vegetation returns, then we don't have very dense vegetation. Whereas if we have very dense vegetation, it's likely that we won't get any ground returns at all, and then we get a, a value of 100 returned. So that's the difference between the two methods. Um, so let's come into here. So we're, we're generating canopy coverage. We have the same kind of options before. We can use extended classifications. You can see that I've, uh, I've kept my ground and vegetation classes from uh, height um, processing. It's all the same. The class rule is the same. You can use extended classifications. If you want to make your empty cells into zero, you can. And then there's this important option here, integration. And you can either choose over radius or over cell. Now, over cell is simpler and faster. And if you have a large raster, if you have a large data set, uh, you should probably start off with oversell because you're going to get a result faster. And, um, and that can, you know, whilst you're experimenting with what your parameters should be, using oversell is going to be faster. So what that means is um, it's going to look inside the boundaries of each raster cell for returns, and it won't look outside of that raster cell. Whereas if I choose over radius, then I can put in the radius of, of investigation. So I'll put in, say, five meters here. And, um, and that means that it's going to look 
uh, in a, a circular radius that has uh, in a circle within five meters uh, with, with a radius of five meters from the center of every cell. So it's going to bring in data returns from outside of the cell and, um, and so the result will be smoother. And then you have some of the other options here, like smooth kernel. Um, so uh, if you tick that on, then it's going to it's going to do a um, uh, some kernel filtering, um, and that means that points that are further away or returns that are further away from the center of the cell will have less weighting than point than returns that are closer to the center of the cell. So I usually tick that on if I'm going to use over radius. But let's start off with over cell. Uh, again, we have clipping option just to uh, clip to a polygon. Um, put in a cell size. Now, I used a cell size of 2 for the canopy height. But with canopy coverage and canopy density, you might want to use a larger cell size because you need to have more samples inside the cell to get some kind of reasonable statistical estimate of what the percentage coverage is or what the percentage, um, what the density is. So I'm going to make a five metre cell. And we'll change this to coverage 01, uh, and we'll let that go. So that's generating that now. Um, <clears throat> and you can see uh, quite fast. So in this case, uh, it didn't have to create the ground surface or anything else. So it was um, quite a lot faster than the previous analysis. I'll turn the height off. Uh, so there's our coverage. Um, and um, and once again, just like the, the canopy height, you can repurpose this. So so what this is telling you is, well, if I, sh if I look straight down, um, what's the likelihood that I can see some surface? So if you didn't want to see vegetation, you wanted to see roofs, for example, you could use those classes instead of vegetation classes and, um, and get different results. So you can repurpose this then. Now let's just try canopy density. So I'll go to canopy density, use all the same. This time let's do it over radius. We'll have a um, our cell size of five meters. So our integration radius of five meters goes um, sort of out to uh, half a cell extra. So the smooth kernel, cell size five, let's make this density over one and hit process. And um, you'll see that it's working here. And it, uh, it's going to take a little bit longer. So when I, as soon as I click on that over radius option, uh, I start to uh, increase the processing time. You want to keep that radius as tight as possible in order to try to keep that processing time contained. Uh, you can see it's still working. It's trying, trying. There it is. So quite a bit longer than uh, the other methods that we uh, that we employed. Uh, anyway, so in the next video, um, we're going to take a look at some of this output uh, for a larger survey for um, for the Central Coast, and and to do that, I'm going to use ProRaster.